All right, hey seniors, welcome back to Transition Time with Sean and Mark. <laughs> um, yeah, we're excited to be making a couple more videos for you as you are kind of entering in your last stage here uh, during your senior year. Uh, before we get in, I wanted to just say a quick word um, about like some of the like, events that are coming up for you guys, just because I want to make sure that you're, you know about them and that like you're excited about them, because I think there's a lot to be excited about. Um, Saturday, May 14th is going to be the, the fun day at the water park, which I hope you guys go to. I, I love that it's just sort of like this thing that's kind of a, you know, something to remake for some, some of the, the fun that was lost on senior trip for some of you. Friday, May 20th is your last day. And actually, I wanted to tell you, like, because the last two years, the seniors didn't get to do this. Uh, but if you weren't aware, that day is really special for seniors. Uh, usually, you guys don't really go to class. Uh, usually uh, you as a senior class like meet in the media center and then you go around the whole school uh, one by one to, to any teacher that you, you want and kind of do like a, a, a white crew. Um, and, and, you know, different classes have organized it differently. Some people have like prepared little speeches, but I, I mean, coming from a teacher that's experienced that and then seeing like, that sort of like ritual for seniors leaving like I think that's really special and so I, th I think senior council I encourage you guys to really take the lead and and do some organizing there. The following Monday, which is May 23rd you're going to have like a full day of like senior transition stuff we're going to have some sessions in the morning. Um, with some alumni and some panels and then we're going to do sort of like a remake of the senior trip sharing time in the afternoon. So that's kind of like your one required day that week um, until Friday, May 27th, which is senior chapel and then like your big special senior lunch and then graduations on Saturday the 28th. So just a little snapshot of upcoming stuff for you guys. All right, really quick, um, Sean and I today want to mention uh, the first two parts of an acronym that, that have kind of become famous. Uh, a guy named David Pollock created these. He's kind of like a, a TCK guru, uh, international transition kind of scholar. And he came up with this, the idea with raft and it kind of works as like the image of a raft, right? Is, is that these, these are tools that, um, these are steps that we're encouraging you to kind of take um, in this process of like building a raft to go from one uh, stage from sometimes, but not always, uh, one place to the next. So starting with R, um, the idea of reconciliation, this is kind of like seen as like the first step in this process. Um, Sean, I'll, I'll kick it over to you. What do you want to tell these guys about the importance of in the process of reconciliation in this stage of transition. Yeah, I think reconciliation can be the one that like people want to avoid the most because it's looking at places in their life, uh, maybe relationships in their life where it, things are just not quite right, like where you know things are not quite right. And um, what's so easy is if, if you have a relationship like that or a situation like that and you're coming up to a transition, it's like really easy just to be like, Pretty soon I'm just going to be gone and I'm not going to have to deal with it anymore. Um, and there's no need to put in the work and put in the effort to, to like find reconciliation in this. Um, but the truth is that those sorts of things can kind of hold you back. Um, you can find yourself in the next stage of life. Um, and some of you might just be sitting there thinking like, oh, like that, that person, like I'm still mad about this or I'm still angry or I'm still bitter. Um, or I just, I, I felt it feels unresolved and those sorts of things can just keep you from fully living in the next stage of life or the next place. Um, and so really, I, I think often we can kind of think of doing this process as conflict, like having to engage in conflict. And I know that many of us are very conflict avoidant. Um, that might be like your cultural background is like we'd rather just kind of dance, you know, tiptoe around this instead of speaking, you know, having a hard conversation. Um, we're just personal, uh, like uh, personality, like that your personality might be to be less, um, you know, comfortable with conflict. Um, but really, instead of thinking about this as just entering conflict, it's, it's about peacemaking. It's about taking something that's 
not quite right in trying to find peace. And so um, I have a quick example of this. I, I always talk about ex-girlfriends because that's, I don't know, that's my thing. Um, so I, <laughs> a lot of ex-girlfriends, um, but I, I dated a girl in, in college who, um, this is the first girl, the first girl I thought I was going to marry. And um, when we broke up, we broke up in kind of a rough way. And like over the next year, I didn't talk to her. And I just, I was a mess. Like I just had a really bad year and I was really down on myself and made a lot of bad decisions. Like in the wake of that, um, and about a year later, I had this conversation with her where we kind of reconciled. We didn't get back together. She was dating somebody else, but I just, we had a conversation where we like clarified some things. And I immediately felt this like bitterness in myself um, just melt away. And I was good. I've been good ever since then. Like it didn't impact me at all after that. And so I'm really thankful that she was willing to offer the opportunity to have that conversation with me. I, I didn't even necessarily seek it out. Um, so that, that's just an example, you know, one example of how um, reconciliation can be so important. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I, I have similar experiences actually with both my parents at different stages of my life, but uh, really like, pivotal moments of important conversations where like there was a clear effort that I initiated to reconcile certain things and then was able to move past that. Um, yeah, for like the, the, the process of reconciliation, like we really encourage you guys, uh, I know it's like probably more private and more personal. Um, so probably it's not something you're gonna be doing in class, but we would really highly encourage you to make a list ask yourself, who, who do I need to reconcile with? Like, who do I need to like make peace with? And then uh, make it a goal, like also maybe make a list of, or make a plan for what that looks like in practice. And, and actually moving on to uh, the A for affirmation, I, I think um, these two go well together because I think they're, they're both the sorts of practical kind of steps that, um, would benefit you guys, I think, to to really do some thinking and maybe even some writing down or some intentional brainstorming about um, like making lists and like making like a reconciliation and, and an affirmation plan. So uh, yeah, Sean, could you say a quick word about the importance of affirmation in the process of transition? Yeah, I think similarly, it's the, you know, if you don't affirm the people who have been really important in this stage of your life, it's something you might look back on and regret. Like if you never get that opportunity and you just are like, oh, that person was so important to this stage of life and I didn't take the time to thank them for that. Um, and that might be a teacher like talking about like going around and doing, you know, the, the why to teachers, like that's that. Like that, it, it could be as simple as that. Um, it could be your favorite barista at a coffee shop. Like, it, I mean, it, it could happen in so many ways. Um, and I don't know, so, um, I found this with my students when I was teaching in Kenya. Um, there was like a huge culture of like roasting each other. I don't know if that's a thing here or if that even is a word anymore, but they would constantly roast each other. Just like pick, like make fun of each other and pick at things about each other. Um, and they did that so easily. But then whenever we tried to get them to be affirming to each other, to say nice words to each other, they got really awkward. They felt uncomfortable with it. Um, and so this is a thing that I think might be uncomfortable, especially when you're younger. I, I think it's been a growth in my life to feel comfortable to affirm. Um, but a few times that I did these like affirmation times with students, like often like students would, I had students who like would end up in tears because they were like, I didn't, I didn't know that people thought this about me. I never knew. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I think often you guys don't, may not share with each other, like how important each other are to you. And I would hope that you guys would take the time to do that. Um, personally, as a teacher, I, I felt like the first four or five years of, of teaching, I would want to like affirm my students and tell them how great I thought they were. But I had this like inner insecurity and, and fear of like, it doesn't matter what I think, like they don't care what I think. And so I wouldn't say anything. Um, but I finally felt like, no, I'm, I'm, I need to get over my own insecurity and just tell, tell my students that I think they're great. And at the end of the year, like we'll write student like letters to some students and have actually received some letters from students that like I still hold on to today because they're that meaningful to me that students took time to, to tell me that. I mean, that just happens to be like my love language, if you know what love languages are, is, is words of affirmation. But I know that for some students too, they've told me like 
you told me that you believed in me and that you thought I was capable. And I never thought that for myself. So don't withhold like your affirmation for people. It can be really important for others, for yourself and for others. Yeah. Yeah, and so I, th I think uh, even though we, we would love it if you made these like really intense like reconciliation and affirmation plans, uh, I think to us like uh, we want you to start small and actually we, we want you to start uh, now. And I th we, we think the affirmation is kind of like between these two, the easiest to sort of practice in, in, uh, in sort of like a, a low pressure, hopefully low anxiety way. And so we're going to give your teachers a few options, um, but uh, we want you the idea is that we want you to practice the process of affirmation by spending some time uh, affirming your classmates now so we're gonna give you time to do that and we will see you guys next time see ya